but we actually have exact an exact formula that helps you create a goal that is doable, okay, and not setting yourself up for failure. And how will your life be different when you achieve those weight loss goals? Okay, how will it change? So now I am going to bring up Dr. Elliot Brown. We're, we're very lucky to have him. We did travel from New Jersey for two hours away, but we're glad to be here and to help expand our success with transitions over the past three years. And Dr. Brown actually is a board certified cardiologist He's been in practice for 20 years now. He's an associate clinical professor of medicine from Mount Sinai School of Medicine, author of Recipe for a Heart Attack, The Body's Perfect Storm, which actually can be purchased through Amazon.com. And he is a Transitions Lifestyle System and Nutrimetric Specialist. So help me welcome Dr. Elliot Brown. <laughs> Snowing now. Okay, so, um, <laughs> you know, Chris hit a few highlights, and um, what I, I really like to uh, impact a few things is talk a little bit about some of the education you get during the 12 weeks in this weight loss solution program. Um, what I would say is I got involved because I'm very nutrition oriented. Um, at the beginning of becoming a cardiologist, I thought it was really cool to pick up paddles and think you were saving somebody's life and all that fun stuff. Um, but really, once that became kind of routine and easy, it was seeing the patient back in the office and getting to get them to own what got them to having the heart attack from all the years of not exercising, not eating right, getting sick. And so the preventative side became the most exciting, really saving the life. You know, just putting your finger in the dike doesn't fix everything. And the office became the opportunity. And so preaching diet uh, and supplementation and proper nutrition became very exciting to me. Uh, and that's how I found Nutrimetrics and TLS, because if I could write a simple put it out there way for people to understand this daunting topic of nutrition. I mean, you go to the bookstore and you have Atkins on one side telling you to eat all fat. And you have Dean Ornish in California telling you to eat just carb and seaweed and tofu and no fat. And both sides do very well. And what are you supposed to do? And, and it's very confusing to the public. So um, I think what, what the difference with this weight loss solution is, is that you don't learn how many shapes to eat. You don't learn what time your delivery is coming of your preformed food. You don't learn what foods equal what points. You learn about nutrition and you learn about yourself, and that is really the best way to truly make a change that's lasting. Because you don't go on after a few weeks to get to your weight goal and think about the world in terms of points and meal replacements. It's a real world out there. So you need to understand what you're doing, and that's what I think TLS provides. Um, when we start classes off, we have people start with their why, why are you doing this, and presumably it is to get an education and make it true change. I think the public now is way more proactive in supplementation and taking on their own health with the way this healthcare system has gone. And, and I think this is, is something that complements it. Um, Dell and IBM and, and every other computer company sits around and focuses on what? Just like every other diet plan. What are we going to do? We're going to eat 25 points. We're going to make computers so we can make a lot of money. We're going to follow this recipe. That's all what? Apple, the number one selling company, sits in the boardroom at the Y. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because we want to make personal, computerized, highly technological items that everyone can use that will enhance their quality of life. And that's why they're the best, because they, they focus on the what. And that's what TLS focuses on, and that's what you need to write down before February. Why am I here, not what am I going to eat? You're here because you want to be healthy, and you want to be equipped with the tools to take this into your own hand, and you want to fit into this dress in June. That's okay also. <laughs> but whatever it is, it is. And, and if you have to make one slide about what TLS focuses on, and this will get rammed down your throat, and that is the whole combination of carbohydrates and glucose and sugar, 
and what that does to insulin and how that affects our metabolism weight. That's the bottom line. America knows how to eat low fat. They don't know how to put down the carbs and they don't even understand healthy carbs. And that's the basis of all the abnormal syndromes, which I'm just going to teach you a little bit about. But you want your blood sugar levels to be basically regulated. And that's done by eating what we call low glycemic impact foods, which I'll touch on in a second. And that keeps you in a nice metabolism of carbohydrate and fat burning. The problem is, is that we often live in very high spiking and, and low dipping glucose levels all day because of our high glycemic index foods. We run on Dunkin'. And that's what this stuff does to us. Processed food, enriched white flour, all of that. And so the glucose levels goes up and down, and we feel crappy all day. We get zapped of our energy, and we want to eat more sugary stuff, and it just doesn't stop. So the purpose of this program is to teach you how to know truthfully for yourself how to be a little bit of different. Does anybody know what glycemic index is? Okay. It's as important as knowing the balance of your checkbook when you write a check so you don't bounce, all right? That's how important this number is. Glycemic index is not on the box, on the label, but it is a number between 0 and 100, where pure sugar is 100. That tells you, from the time you eat a food, how fast the sugar levels rise, and therefore the insulin levels rise. This is how our body chemistry works. And, and PLS breaks it down nice for you how to learn, as I would. 70 to 100 is a high glycemic index food. 0 to 55 is low and 56 to 70 is in the middle. You don't have to remember all that stuff. Just the idea that you're gonna learn how to make choices. God invented carbohydrates, they're not bad. It's just what we do with them. So you're gonna learn how to make choices naturally in the low and middle range instead of the high range. And you'll be very fooled to learn what foods you may be eating. Cheerio cereal has a glycemic index of 77. The white potato at Applebee's, every restaurant, a glycemic index of 78. Whereas a sweet potato and a red skin new potato has 54 and 55 respectively. A Hershey bar is 79.80. Cherries is 22. They're both sweet. Has nothing to do with the flavor. And you're gonna learn about this because you're gonna be given literature and you're gonna practice and you're gonna meet in the Trader Joe's or a supermarket. But that's what glycemic index means. And what it translates in our bodies is that people who eat high glycemic index diets, their sugar levels and insulin levels rise very quickly and very high and come down. The kid that eats frosted flakes at 7 in the morning and his sugar level is 0 at 10, but he doesn't get lunch until 12 and he's falling asleep in class. As opposed to the low glycemic index diet that has a very low peaking, long sustaining glucose release into the bloodstream after you eat it. And this has very important implications in our bodies and why we get sick. And so just to take it one step further, you've heard of this word insulin, this hormone that is made when you eat a carbohydrate or something sweet. All right, it's nothing very complicated. God invented insulin because a long time ago there wasn't a quick check on every corner and you had to stab a buffalo and you eat a meal and you had to store calories because you didn't know when you were gonna get food again. So insulin goes to the storage cells and opens up the gates and packs in all the calories you're eating that you don't need right this second. That's, that's why we're alive today. The problem is, if you eat foods that constantly raise blood sugar levels very high, your insulin levels will go very high. And that's not a healthy thing, and I'll tell you why. So what happened was, carbohydrates, which aren't horrible in and of themselves, showed up um, somewhere in Mesopotamian times, in Biblical times, and they grew grains and they had cracked roots and nobody had heart attacks because they were whole grains. In the Industrial Revolution, when we started to mill grains, the heat from the equipment made the good, healthy seed rancid. So they would separate it and you would just mill the stalks and you get the fine flour that's enriched white flour now in all of our baked goods. So it has permeated our marketplace but these fine particles have a very, they just dissolve right in, the sugar levels go right up. It's in your entomins, your cookies, your pizza dough, your bagels, all of it. So we've moved from a very low glycemic index to high glycemic index, largely due to milling 
and technology, and it's, it's why we have one third of 50% obesity in this country right now, certainly overweight. So there is this syndrome in cardiology that makes people the highest risk of anybody walking around called metabolic syndrome. And it's set up by this kind of diet, high glycemic index foods, and high insulin levels. And this sets us up for what's called insulin resistance, which is diabetes. So how does this work? If you're a storage cell, and you live in a body that eats high glycemic index foods, and every time you look outside your fence, your cell membrane, all you see is high glucose and insulin levels. Well, if your job is storing that stuff, and it's always out there, you say to yourself, you know what? I don't need 12 entryways on my, on my border to get the stuff in. I only need like six of them, because it's always out there. I'm going to use the space from the other six for Optimum Online and Triple Play Cable and all these other things that cells do on their membranes. And so after a few decades of going from 12 to 10 to 8 to 6, you wake up in your 40s one day and uh, you're supposed to get blood work the next morning and you had your little snack at about 10 o'clock at night watching TV and you only have six way entryways into each cell of getting out of the bloodstream instead of 12. And so you go and you get your blood drawn, but all the sugar hasn't gone out yet into the storage cells. And when you get your blood drawn, your sugar level's high. That's called insulin resistance. That's type 2 diabetes. But if you change your eating to low glycemic index, and there's no more insulin and glucose all the time outside, the cells will increase, and you will become less insulin resistant and go back to the normal state. That's why constantly bombarding your body with high glycemic index foods are bad. The high glucose levels and insulin levels change the storage cells and lead to diabetes. So if you understand that, hopefully, you will see that um, <clears throat> in this last slide, at least, this is an example of a traffic jam of glucose molecules where there's less exits to get out of the bloodstream. That's why I have that picture. And then when you draw the blood, you have the excess glucose, that's the diabetes. The other side of this, which is important, is the emotional side. You've all, you know, lost 500 pounds dieting in your lifetime, okay, up and down. And, and that's why this is also a lifestyle change, because it understands that how you react emotionally and your stress response will make you want to grab the wrong carbohydrates, all right? And so you have to plan on this. And you sort of have to change the kitchen, and they talk to you about that, so that you don't grab the wrong things. But it's also a great opportunity to learn how you derail yourself, and what your buttons are, because you've seen them before. And what happens is, is that when we get stressed, this is why we get sick, all right? Anxiety and depression activate the central nervous system and our stress response. And a long time ago, we had a stress response because we had to run away from a saber-toothed tiger or a predator and we had to live. So what happened was we made all this adrenaline and all this cortisone and pumped it out and we started running. And then we would run into a cave and it would all go away. And that's our stress response. But what happens during all that? Well, you get increased blood pressure and you get increased heart rate and increased breathing, right? You get faster blood clotting because if the saber-toothed tiger whacks you, you want to stop clotting and you want to live. You have increased inflammation, because if you have an injury, you want to survive that. You have increased stomach acids, you're not interested in digesting food, you produce more sugar, and you produce more fatty acids for energy. You're running away from somebody, you need to survive. You decrease things like digestion, you're allergic and immune responses. And then you go into the cave and everything comes back to normal. But what happens today in our culture? We have two working parents, 30-year mortgages, a declining economy, crap and fast food all over the place, stress at work, stress at home, so this doesn't get turned off. You're not in the cave in the safe or two, it doesn't go away. So what's increased blood pressure all the time? Hypertension. What's increased production of blood sugar? Diabetes. What's increased fatty acids? High cholesterol and triglycerides. What's decreased immune system and allergic responses? Diarrhea, psoriasis, rashes, allergies. Increased stomach acids, ulcer disease. OK, 
okay? I wouldn't have a job if people didn't have stress and react to it improperly. It's so environmental, it's ridiculous. Yeah, some people have genes to get a heart attack when they're 40, but that has nothing to do with being overweight. It's the acquired stuff from what we do to ourselves. And so by understanding this and recognizing it, we have a shot at changing it. So poor management of stress and high levels of emotion affect your resilience. You choose the wrong foods. You also, if your stress response is always turned on, believe it or not, you need more blood sugar for energy, and so you actually crave carbohydrates. But you eat the wrong ones. You eat the high glycemic index ones. If you eat the low glycemic index, you can protect yourself. So the poor choice, of course, leads to the high fat, salty, hypertension, diabetes, overweight. This is the metabolic syndrome, and this is what people are dropping. So anyway, that's pretty much what I kind of want to introduce you about as far as the education of what this program stresses. You're going to hear a little bit about detox, and I'm going to give you two words about it. It's fruit and vegetables basically the whole week. And any of you all are smart enough to realize that if you put somebody on that food program, they're going to lose weight. It doesn't take a genius. But the truth is it's a jump start for the first week. But what it does do is it perfectly regulates your insulin and glucose levels which have probably not been regulated in many decades. And if you give it two to three days, by the third day, your energy levels are going to be unbelievable. And you know what? You're not going to want to eat the crap, because you're going to feel so good. And that's what you need to focus on, not how you're depriving yourself of the Doritos. Focus on how great you're feeling. Let yourself feel it, and, and, and it'll be good. And I wish you all a lot of luck and sorry. Sum it up. What is TLS? We are not a diet. We're not a quick fix. Pill.